sunlight is streaming in from outdoors through this tube. The big lens focuses an image of the sun on the slit. And over here, we have a spectroscope. The slit, a collimating lens which produces a parallel beam of light in this region, and a glass prism. Finally, the camera. We see numerous dark lines in the spectrum of sunlight. They were studied by Joseph Fraunhofer in the early 19th century. He used some of them as fixed reference marks to measure the values for the index of refraction of optical glass. In turn, these values enabled him to produce extremely fine achromatic lenses. Here we want to talk about a series of experiments by Fraunhofer in a different area of optics, in diffraction. In these experiments, he was led to discover the use of diffraction gratings as a tool for the spectroscopist. It's quite easy for me to modify this spectroscope for observations in diffraction. First of all, I remove the glass prism. The lens collimates the light from the source slit the beam in here is parallel. The camera lens is focused for infinity. So, at present, an image of the source slit, irradiated by sunlight, is sharply focused on our film. To study diffraction patterns, all I need to do is place a diffracting object in the parallel beam. But before I do so, I would like to explain how Joseph Fraunhofer went about these experiments. Some of his apparatus and some of his diffraction gratings are preserved in the German Museum of Science and Technology in Munich, the city in Bavaria where Fraunhofer spent a large part of his life. This is the spectrometer he used for the study of diffraction. Fraunhofer did not have a collimating lens. Instead, he had the source slit very far away from the spectrometer, over 40 feet. The light arriving at the telescope from the slit was essentially parallel. With the eyepiece focused on the source slit and with the slit image exactly on the intersection of the crosshairs in the eyepiece, the telescope's angular position was determined on this vernier protractor to within a few seconds of arc. Next, the diffracting object was placed on a table in front of the telescope. Finally, the telescope is turned through some angle, the angle of diffraction, at which some effect of interest occurs. This angle can be determined by again reading the lower vernier protractor. Now, we don't want to repeat Fraunhofer's precise measurements of angles here. We just want to describe to you what he did in a qualitative way and show you what he saw. He was led to realize the uses of gratings by looking at patterns from the single, the double, the triple slit, and so on. Let me begin by putting a single slit in here. Instead of the sharp image of the source slit, which we saw earlier, we now see a white fringe at the center. But light reaches our photographic film in a broad angular range on either side, in the form of spectra arranged symmetrically about the center white fringe. Fraunhofer studied this pattern, and he accounted for the appearance of each color in these spectra by the arguments of wave interference. Thus, the light appears purple at the positions indicated by the arrows because at these angles of diffraction, the single slit produces destructive interference for green spectral light. Blue and red predominate, producing the mixed color purple. This is the pattern created by two diffracting slits of exactly the same widths placed parallel and close to each other in the same plane. The dark space between the slits is approximately as wide 
as each slit. Additional spectra have appeared, but there still is a central white fringe, although it is narrower. Symmetrically on each side, in orderly manner, one sees spectra, one following upon another. They are broader the further they lie from the center. We call this the first order spectrum. This the second, the third, the fourth order, and so on. Again, the colors are not the primary spectral colors into which a glass prism would disperse white light. This is because each monochromatic beam of fixed wavelength is spread into broad fringes by the two slits acting together, as you see in this picture, taken after we inserted a narrow band red filter into the beam. Let's return to the two slit pattern as it appears when the incident beam is white again. Take a look at one of the fringes which appears purple because the white light reaching it from the two slits interferes destructively for the primary green region of the spectrum, only red and blue remain. They combine into purple. Other mixed colors occur at other positions, but in the center of the pattern, the two slits interfere constructively for all wavelengths. The central fringe is white. We'll now proceed by adding more slits one at a time, parallel to the two we are using here. Each will have the same width and will be placed at the same spacing as the others. Here you see the effect of adding a third slit. The central white fringe is narrower and so are, in fact, the spectra of all the orders. An interesting new effect is the appearance of weak subsidiary spectra exactly one between the white center fringe and the first order on each side. In fact, there is one subsidiary spectrum between all successive main orders in the case of the triple slit pattern. A trace of the subsidiary spectrum between the main spectra of orders one and two is barely visible here. With four slits, each main order spectrum is narrowed even more, and the central white fringe, also narrower, begins to look more like a sharp image of the source slit. Now there are two subsidiary spectra between the main orders. Their number always equals the number of slits, less two. The more slits one uses, the weaker will be these subsidiary spectra in intensity. In this 10-slit pattern, the subsidiary spectra are so weak that one can barely see them. There is another change in the character of these spectral patterns. It becomes more pronounced as more slits are added. The spectra of the inner orders are beginning to look more like primary spectra, like those which a glass prism would produce by dispersion. Look, for example, at the way the color red appears in the first order. Even in the second order, it appears more nearly like primary red, while in the third, one still sees purple. 20 slits. Note that the white central fringe is quite sharp and narrow. The main spectra of orders one and two are also quite narrow and neatly separated from each other. The spectra broaden and they overlap at larger order numbers.